so we do credit this here he's gonna uh, swap out the shocks on the front end of a c4 corvette but this is one of the simplest thing you can do in a c4 if your c4 has so uh, this 10 millimeters for this cover right here you just take this uh take this off some c4s don't have it like this actual covering i think but anyway it's pretty simple here we got the lower mounting point right here 13 30 millimeter right here and there's a uh, 30 millimeter on the bottom so what you want to do is hold the top i mean hold it yeah hold the top or the bottom but well, you need a longer socket for the bottom because it's kind of inset in there so if you get a little short socket it's not going to fit into the the little inlet right there so 13 millimeter this i believe is a 916 inch right here nut take the top off so it's that easy that simple all right and we're gonna go with the let me see qa1 single adjustable shocks as you can see pretty there's nothing to it take this one out swap this one in the one thing you gotta you know just be aware of is the how the washers go you know as you can see the old one with the old wash i mean old washers and bushing right here and there's a way to put the bushings too see this side this side anyway let me take this one off and uh then we'll install the other one real quick okay so the uh, what's it called the new hardware for the qa1 is a little bit different because it's got a 14 millimeter uh, nut on the bottom uh, i don't know what the size of the top or top one is but anyway it's a different size so but if you're going with the oem you know of course you know you make sure you save your uh, nuts right here they go like this and and nuts and bolts so anyway when it comes to tools you don't really need a lot it's really the most basic things you know i just got a couple different sockets wrenches and uh you know obviously take your wheels off i got a metric and standard sizes yeah, there's no specialty tools for this so anyway yeah i'm still working on it now when you're taking this top nut off see how there's a groove right at the top right here so you can hold it because if you're spinning like this you're spinning the whole rod so you never get the thing off so you just make sure you i forgot about this last time yeah you get a like a little vice grip or you know crescent wrench you can hold that top end go ahead and loosen that nut up all right okay all right and we're back at it so here now I remove the old shock and just keep in mind how these washers go not that it matters too much or it does matter but mainly do the bushings they don't really matter too much see you got your nut right here the washer goes like this then in the washer you get this piece See how it's a little flatter on top and it's got a little groove on the bottom. That and this one's like sort of the opposite. It goes like such. So this new one, same thing. We're gonna start with the bottom washer like this. And this part like this with the little little hole like this. Then on top, this one as such. See this bigger part, flat part right here, flatter. And your top washer just like this and then you put nut in this case another nut right here for whatever reason which i'm assuming it's a locking nut so it doesn't spin back or whatever anyway that's that the one thing i did notice um, again i'm going with aftermarket q1 shocks they come with the bigger screw right here the bolt uh it's slightly too big for this hole which is no big deal we're gonna go ahead and uh, reuse the OEM one and of course if you're going with the OEM shocks, you know Yeah, uh, there's not an issue right here And also this thing since uh, it's more of a generic shock QA1 makes them for several different cars with this um, Just happened to fit this uh, 80, 88 to 96 C4 Corvette so they come with this thing um, parallel to the Bottom of the shock and if you see right here how C4 shock mounts sort of like this so the bolts will be like vertical that means uh, uh within the bushing it's a little bit twisted you know so we're gonna have to twist it into place because if not then these are not gonna be flat and flush with this they're gonna be more like angle like that anyway yeah you stick it in through the bottom obviously right here you got the washer in this one remember how it goes like this oh my okay Sorry to do the hold the phone and then motherfucker. Come on bad girl. You know you gotta finesse this thing in place. Okay, let's see. Okay. 
Okay, got the, I'm gonna grab the bushing now, god damn it. Got the little bushing there. Um, it helps when you have little baby hands like me. Maybe have your little kid to help you. Okay, got the bushing in. I pull the shaft out a little bit more so I can have more play with it. this in you got your little uh, washer see how this is like a indented to you got your washer you got your nut I believe this is a 40 millimeter nut right here maybe the same size as the OEM one and where you go with that uh, and then of course when I, uh, I'm assuming this is the instruction doesn't say but I'm assuming this is like a locking nut to make sure this doesn't back out and shit anyway. now see it's super easy on the C4 that one's uh i believe yeah sort of it's just a little bit different setup but it's pretty much the same idea Motherfucker. this is why this is why i don't like doing fucking videos when i'm working on things because i don't know what i'm doing second i have to hold shit get you put the bolt right here goes to the bottom barely reaches because this thing is you know so thick the mounting point of this base is about half an inch right here. half an inch thick so anyway you got your 13 millimeter right there. You take the other one. See how this one's much thinner. So you have less less threads. And when, when I put this one, the SPC uh, upper control on, I had to get new bolts because this thing is so thin and the other bolts uh, for the other one were so thick, like the base mounting. So I had to get new bolts and shit. But this one, fortunately, is long enough so we can, you know, at least use some threads on that. Anyway, that's how you mount it. Uh, and then you just, you know, just bolt the back, make sure it's tight and shit. Uh, bolt the back up with little things. You take it for a spin. Like I said, it's a, I think, what does it say? Shit, shit, right here. How many adjust, adjustments you have? Let me look at that. Uh, with the single adjustable uh, front shock. So it's, uh, see that? 13 to 18 clicks. So it got 18 total clicks in front. And see if it was a double adjuster, we have different. It gives you an idea, so you have an idea how to set it up. Which, if I knew it would come with so that, I would just buy the double adjuster. But who gives a fuck? We're gonna go with 18 clicks. Make sure it rides like shit. All right. That's the, that's the main intent. If it rides like shit, it must be good for racing, you know. <laughs> Grab this subtle. Oh, you know. It would be a good idea to have a fucking videographer, but we're on a budget right now. And yeah, yeah, I mean, that's it for the front shocks. And I, I'll show the back ones in a, probably another video because this was like eight minutes long already, which is probably a, a solid minute of good content. The rest is just me trying to explain myself, you know. But anyway, there you go, that's it, and that's that. And again, when you're spinning it down, remember this is indented so you can hold the actual this thing right here. Focus, man. See this and spin it without spinning the nut and the rod right there. And anyway, that's it for this video. I'll do another video for the rear <coughs> whenever I get to that, you know.